All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Precious Maputle. I'm the Phoebe Marketing Coordinator. Most of you, I know we were together at the induction and welcome uh, last week. Was it last week? I think it was last week. So welcome back if you were with me last week and thank you for coming back for today's session. Today's um, workshop is, the, is an EXA virtual road to registration workshop. And it's presented in partnership with the Engineering Council of South Africa. Just to observe some few um, ground rules before we proceed with the session, may I kindly ask everybody to turn off their cameras, um, to switch off or rather mute their mics. And um, that's number one. Number two, you're more than welcome to engage with the speaker through posting questions in the chat box or when he opens up the floor for questions, you're more than welcome to, to raise your hand and um, using the emojis and reactions button at the top, top bar of the screen, there's a there's a there's a button called reactions next to in between chat and rooms. Click reactions and raise your hand. And um, myself and um, Balissa will 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 acknowledge your questions as well as the presenter. So today's uh, workshop is just to provide a training to all of you that are here know that in order for you to be registered as a professional engineer, there are certain steps that you need to to go through and there are certain steps that you need to go through and in that regard this workshop will um, enlighten you. I'm going to hand over to Palisa from the Stakeholder Relations and Marketing Division from the Engineering Council of South Africa to introduce who EXA is as well as the guest for today. Alisa. All right. Thank you so much, Precious. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay. Good morning, everyone. My name is Balisa Macheta, and I am the Stakeholder Relations and Marketing Assistant at the Engineering Council of South Africa. Just to give a brief um, introduce, introduction of EXA. Um, the Engineering Council of South Africa is a statutory body established in terms of the Engineering Profession Act, the EPA, 46 of 2000. So our primary role as EXA is the regulation of the engineering profession in terms of this act. Our functions are the accreditation of engineering programs, the registration of persons as professionals in specified categories and the regulation of the practice of registered persons. Now, through this virtual road to registration sessions, we aim to provide information on everything regarding EXA registration to make their journey easy because um, registration with EXA um, provides um, the industry cognition that is needed and that attests to the demonstrated competence in the engineering profession through the relevant education train and educational training and experience that is acquired. So these um, sessions are informative in a way that we assist the prospective, prospective registrants understand and navigate their way in successfully achieving EXA re registration and recognition. Now to introduce our speaker, um, we have Mr. Jones Muloisane. He is a PR tech eng. Now Mr. Muloisane is a qualified engineer, lecturer, and section head of the Department of Civil Engineering at the Tswane University of Technology. And he holds a non-executive director position at Delta Built Environment Consultants. Uh, Mr. Moloisani has served on various extra structures, including being a council member in the fourth term and is currently in the sixth term of council, where he holds positions of deputy chair of the education committee, member of the investigations committee. He is also a member of the research policy and standards committee. 
Uh, he is um, a member and affiliated with various organizations, including the South African Institution of Civil Engineering, which is SICI. He is a member of the Institute of Professional Engineering Technologists, IPET. He is a member of the Chamber of Engineering Technology. He is a member of Project Management South Africa, and he is a member of the Institute of Director Southern Africa. Now I will hand over to Mr. Moloisane to, oh no, I'll hand over to Precious before Mr. Moloisane. So she, she gathers everything up and then we'll hand over to Mr. Moloisane to also introduce himself. Now with your permission, everyone may I ask that um, Precious um, records the session so that everyone can have their recording of the session as well after the session. Thank you, Precious. Thank you so much, Balisa. I think you did all the work. You introduced our speaker. You highlighted the scope of the workshop. And yes. I think it's safe to hand over to Hatejo. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the students. Kindly note, there's a link in the chat box. Please complete it when you get a moment. Focus in the workshop, but kindly complete it when you get a moment as evidence of your attendance. OK, thank you very much, uh, colleagues, uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Maputle and Ms. Macheta for the warm introduction. I really appreciate um, Without any further ado, allow me to share the presentation so that we get on going. OK. Please confirm if you are able to see the screen. Yes, we yes, are. Yes, we can. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. What I'm going to do just for the bandwidth, I'm just going to switch off my camera. I just wanted to have my camera on so that you can see as to who are you talking, connect the voice to the face. We'll have a, an engagement afterwards just so that we can continue. Wonderful. Thank you very much for the Engineering Council of South Africa for having had uh, requested me to assist as we always do for our profession and to the University of Johannesburg, that definitely to the Faculty of Engineering and Build Environment and to Ms. Maputle as well for having trust uh, in us. When I say us, I mean myself and EXA, so that we, as we have been doing this for some time. Um, let's talk now the engineering language in terms of the road to registration, in terms of the candidacy and in terms of the professional status. And I take it that uh, most of the engineering practitioners or engineering practitioners to be and the students are also aware that the new terminology came on board, which we call the identification of engineering work that has been gazetted in March of uh, last year. So we've been doing some great work behind the scenes, but we'll just touch base on that as we, we go along. Let's move on then. So for today's presentation, just a succinct uh, direct to it. In terms of the table of contents, we'll talk about the regulatory context in terms of why is the regulation of the profession and the build environment landscape, just to understand where do we fit in. When I say we, I mean from engineering side and the regulation of the engineering profession itself. At the top, it is about the context of regulation, but here we'll touch base on the profession itself. The relationship with the voluntary associations, which is very, very critical, and I heard that uh, you, you had from my bio when they introduced me, I belong to a few of them and we play a very critical role there. The role players related to registration, that the, those who and who are in the registration uh, model and the professional development model as well, very important to you as students. And I think that some of you are graduate students as well. So you'll see how these two things fit in. The registration requirement is a lengthy one, is the core of this uh, uh, the, the presentation today. We spoke about the regulatory context. Uh, let's first start first at the beginning where this starts. Section 22 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa, which is the supreme law of the country, refers to that every citizen has the right to choose their trade, occupation and profession freely. The practice of a trade, occupation or profession may be regulated by law. Now, in law, the may, the shall, the be, 
means something different. So in this case, it was opened up from the constitution that may be regulated. So maybe regulated is an option that was given. So then what happened? South Africa chose to regulate the profession as a country. And this gave rise to the Engineering Profession Act of 2000, Act number 46 of 2000, or the EPA in short. Then the EPA provided for the establishment of a district uh, person to be known as the Engineering Council of South Africa. Although EXA existed since 1968 under the SACP Act, things evolved as, as time went by, but we're only focusing to where we are. Before this act, there was Act, of, act 114 of 1990 that was repelled, and Act number 46 of 2000 came into being when things were streamlined, and I'll indicate why that happened. Then as we speak about registration, so that is a tool by which EXA uses now to regulate the profession. Same as in other cases as well, or in other professions in terms of health and in terms of law, in terms of accounting, and many others as well. Registration is the tool that is being used to regulate the profession. We spoke about the built environment landscape. Let's understand where this fits in. The ministry under which the all these cadres in engineering and others fit in is the Public Works and Infrastructure Ministry. And the ministry has got an overarching body referred to as the Council for the Built Environment or CBE. Under CBE, there are six overarching council. First being the South African Council for the Architectural Profession or the Architects. Then they've got the South African Council for the Landscape Architectural Profession. So in architecture, they separate those that are doing the landscape that is on the, the ground and those that are dealing with the buildings. And then third, as you can see there in a red triangle is engineering. That's where now Engineering Council of South Africa features. And then there's also the South African Council for the Property Valuers. So those are the, after the architects drew the build, drew did the sketch or the drawing of a building. Then engineering come in place to have that building standing, and then it is evaluated by the property uh, valuers. Then there's also the South African Council for Project and Construction Management Professions that we are also familiar with in terms of construction management and uh, project management. And then lastly, but not last but not least, the South African Council for the Quality for the quantity surveying profession or SAQSP. So those are the ones that take look after the quantities, a bill of quantities and so on and so on. So this is just to give you a background to the landscape of the in built environment from where we are as the bottom up approach in terms of who's the ministry to which we fall into or report to. The regulation of the engineering profession in terms of governance, as we spoke about the executive authority will be the ministry of which we report to. And then there's also the accounting authority that coordinates those six councils for the build environment professions, which is the Council for the Build Environment or CBE. Then we've got the accounting authority, which is the EXA Council. And you had that um, this uh, Marketa referred to that I've been, I was part of the fourth term of council from 2012 to 2016. Then I'm also back in council for the sixth term, which is 2020 to 2024. So the accounting authority in terms of the engineering profession is the council that has been appointed by the same Minister of Public Works, 50 council members. Then council appoints accounting officer, which is the ex CEO who overarches the office work of the engineering council of South Africa. As it was indicated by uh, Ms. Marketa, the ex is a statutory body uh, established in terms of the Engineering Professions Act and derives its mandate and responsibilities from this act. So nothing that is being done by EXA is out of this act. So everything emanates from the act. What is very critical and important, the act gives EXA council and EXA staff, office people, the power to delegate powers to extra committees or to delegate power to other people as well. Like for example, now, because of the mandate that is there of delegation, I'm representing council and I'm doing this on behalf of the 50 council member and on behalf of the EXA office to present this road to registration to you. So this is how EXA regulates the engineering profession in terms of the value chain. As you can see, they refer to that a member, I'm a committee member of the High Impact Committee of Council, which is RPSC, which is the Research Policy and Standards Committee. So the everything that before it's done goes to wherever other business units inside EXA starts first at the Research Policy and Standards and then the procedures and development. So all those have to be in place first, then they fit into others. For example, there's accreditation of the engineering program that is done on a four yearly basis, depending on the duration of the program at the institutions of higher learning. 
then there's also registration and quality assurance. And that's where we are today, as you can see, is highlighted in red. And there's also, again, professional conduct management that is done for the registered people, either in candidacy or in the professional status. Then after that is a lifelong thing of the continuous professional, de continuing professional development that has to be taken care of. So this is the value chain in terms of how EXA does the regulation in terms of uh, ensuring that the profession is safeguarded. Then from the Act, as you can see here, these are the categories of registration that have been taken as such from there. Section 18, subsection 1 refers to the categories in which a person may register in the engineering profession. And again, if you remember in the Constitution, they, they spoke about May. May comes back again here. So the interpretation of May in law is not the same as in the Oxford Dictionary. So it's something else that uh, propels or guides the people that are in charge or those that are at the helm to look into things differently. Then it's, it first start under A with the professional uh, status, which is the professional engineer, professional engineering technologist, professional certificated engineer, or professional engineering technician. And then in under subsection B, these are the candidates. So we've got candidate engineer, candidate engineering technologist, and candidate certificated engineer, and the candidate engineering technician. And again, under subsection C, the specified categories prescribed by council. So these are the categories that are ne neither or of the ones that I mentioned above. For example, for the lift inspect uh, machine um, uh, inspectors, we also have the clinical uh, inspectors uh, in terms of the medical equipment, medical equipment maintainers. We also have the material testers that do not fall in any of so hence they are called the specified categories. And then again, if we move further, it says the person may not practice in any of the categories contemplated in subsection one unless he or she is registered in that category. So you have to either register in as a candidate or as a professional or as a specified in the specified categories. So these are the categories of registration. For now, in terms of where we are, we'll only focus on the professional engineer, engineering technologist, and the engineering technician. This is just in a nutshell to show a schematic representation of those categories. As you can see, we spoke about the specified category that they're not going to touch base on. Um, and then we also refer to the candidacy and the professional. So one fits to the other after um, the achievement of competency for professional registration from the other one. This is the professional development model, which is very, very important so that you understand how the value chain of registration to a, an applicant or an individual works like. Let's start below here at the accredited program. Um, a student will enter or a learner from high school or from wherever will enter into an accredited program that has been accredited by EXA for a certain period of, of years or a duration that is given to complete an engineering qualification in terms of engineering education. Then there comes the graduation time. After that, it means the that person who's now a graduate who was a student and who came in as a learner has achieved stage one and met the standard for engineering education. Then they register for a certain period as candidates. As you can see, the, 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 the block, the second block, the model is the dark color. It will be a candidacy registration. In there, then, it goes further that one must achieve the training and experience. While it's been trained, experience is accumulated for a certain period of time, not less than minimum three years post qualification. Then once that has been made, then the applicant will be legible now for registration. In the, so once that is done, it meant then after the professional registration is done, the applicant has now met the standard for professional competency. Can you see where it has been built up? Engineering education, registration as a candidate, and then training and experience for a certain period, not less than three years minimum post qualification. Then the professional competency status has been met. After that, then uh, the applicant will be practicing for lifelong. But the professional registration is not lifelong as it was before. So it, uh, it is now, it's got a five year renewal process like the driver's license. In there, it is expected that the applicant observes code of conduct, the applicant uh, achieves the competence through uh, continuing professional development and they also pay the annual fees. As EXA does not receive any statutory funding from government, it's reliant on the uh, registered people. So it is very important to make sure that in a five year cycle, five credits are achieved as in the three categories of continuing professional development to retain the registration process. So that not happen again, neither all of those are met. 
Excel will contact the applicant, I mean the registered person to check as to what the chances are or where there lies the problem. And then they will uh, have an advice in terms of those that are not meeting, Excel does not have a choice but to cancel registration. So these are the common um, requirements for all applicants. Let's have a look at them. To attend registration in the candidate category, an applicant must demonstrate that meets he or she meets the educational requirements. We spoke about that in the previous slide in terms of the accredited program, but there are also ways and means of, uh, of getting there to those that do not meet them. And then the educational requirements may be met by one, holding an ex accredited qualification or an acceptable combination of accredited qualifications. And we'll, we'll just, just based on this prescribed for the category or holding a qualification or a combination of qualifications recognized under an international agreement, that is the educational accords, under the auspices of the International Engineering Alliance, relevant to that category. We'll touch base on who is the International Engineering Alliance later in the, in the presentation. Then, thirdly, or holding a qualification or a combination of qualifications that have been determined by case-by-case -case evaluation to satisfy criteria for substantial equivalence to an accredited qualification for that category. The fourth place will be to present a combination of evidence determined by EXA for the category that indicates an individual level of educational achievement against criteria demonstrated that it is substantially equivalent to an accredited qualification. I'll just go back to explain this. So the first one, clean slate, whereby the applicant come from, uh, come from an accredited qualification that or program that has been accredited by EXA, and then or having an acceptable combination thereof. The second one is again a combination that come from the um, the signatory, which is the from the other accords, either the Washington Accord or the Sydney Accord or the Dublin Accord, in terms of that mutual recognition that is between the members of the International Engineer Alliance. The third one here is whereby now this is a case by case. So, for example, if you have been in class with someone because your program is not accredited, it becomes difficult for EXA when they do the evaluation for substantial equivalent to give one blanket. So therefore, instead of having could have having had accredited a program in, in, in its own, then here is the applicant who's presenting that qualification that EXA does not know about, EXA is not aware of, and EXA has not accredited it. Hence the word case by case evaluation to satisfy the criteria. Then the last one is again a combination of other things to make sure that either recognition of prior learning, work practice, and all of those, or the short courses that have been attended that are credit bearing to determine the educational background for evaluation in terms of the substantial equivalent. So this is how EXA does the business of in terms of evaluating the qualification. Then to attain a registration in a professional category, an applicant must demonstrate that we spoke about meeting the educational requirements for that category. We'll talk about the categories later. Demonstrate competent performance against the prescribed standards for registration in that category. So council determines, EXA council determines those prescribed standards. They prescribe those standards that are for registration in different categories. And then competency comes into play. So it's not necessarily an experience of over the years. It's that competent experience that meet the 11 outcomes that are requirement for professional registration. It is deemed unlikely that competency can be developed in less than three years and demonstrated at the required level. Hence, as per the provision of the Engineering Profession Act, EXA has prescribed a period before applying for professional registration as a minimum three years. And this is also found in document R-04P, which is the document for mentoring and guiding under section 7.3.2. So please take that into cognizance that the requirement for registration in terms of duration is three years post qualification. So these are the um, categories of, um, of uh, professional registration in terms of education and training experience. You'll see starting at the top, moving down. Professional engineer, if you've got a qualification of four years, then the requirement is three years, same as for the qualification of five years post-qualification. Coming to the professional engineering technologies, it differs slight somehow in terms of that for a three-year qualification, the training experience is four years that is required. Vice versa, for a four-year qualification, then it is three years requirement. For the professional engineering uh, technicians, then again the same applies for the two-year minimum um, duration for education, engineering education the requirement is four years post-qualification. So the benchmark that we spoke about is a standard that is there, but 
nothing will be below. That's why it says minimum three years post qualification. It can be more, but not less than that. Same as for the three year qualification, it will be the three years post qualification there. And as we indicated previously and under bullet number four the, on the previous slide, academic programs must be accredited, recognized or evaluated as substantial equivalent with individual assessments where required. So EXA will ensure that those qual qualifications, engineering qualifications that are not accredited, nor known or not recognized, the applicants that come from those qualifications or programs will have to go through the educational background evaluation for substantial equivalence. These are the benchmark and alternative route qualifications that are in existence. As you can see, X has been recognizing them before 1971. And as time evolved in terms of qualification, there was an involvement in between 19, 1971 and 1980 and post 1980. Then you see there in red, those are the benchmark qualifications. And if you check there, the other ones that are not benchmarked, so the three years falls off, is either more now in terms of that. Then what X requires is in the the number of years or the duration that is required post qualification in the one year must be at a level of engi taking engineering responsibility whereby you are responsible and there are ways and means that are given in the in the standards the competency standards and the overarching policy which is r-01 polpc and also the the competency standard which is r-02 sta standing for standard and then there's PE forward slash PT forward slash PCE forward slash PN. That document is what the assessors, moderators, and reviewers use when they do the evaluation or the assessment for professional registration. So equally so, this will apply for the, the previous one was for the engineering, um, in engineering technicians. This one is for the engineering technology. So you can see now the benchmark moved to the former BTEC that we know that has been phased out, then came in on the new block the on the new uh, on the block the new kit which is the advanced diploma in engineering so and we also have the bachelor of engineering technology it's a new qualification that is a benchmark mirror imaging that to the previous one in terms of the technician you see is the advanced certificate in engineering and again the advanced certificate in engineering practice the national diploma which is one from united 151 that has been phased out and the diploma in engineering which is a benchmark qualification and the diploma diploma in engineering technology so you'll see the differences that are, are, are indicated there as well. Moving forward, then this is the registration requirements, the, uh, the documents that define the, the, the registration system at exam. We start first in the middle block there that refers to the Engineering Profession Act, number Act number 46 of 2000, or the EPA. We spoke about it. Then the arrow goes down. Before going there, you can see on the signs the Council must accredit programs. We spoke about the main may recognize programs, may assess applicants. So the, the two ones are not mandatory, but EXA has decided to regulate the profession. Then it changes the scope of the word may in terms of law in what has been written down. And again, council must register a person who has, demonstrate, who has demonstrated competency against standard. Remember, we refer to section 18, subsection 1, in terms of the candidacy and professional registration. And again, subsection 19 of the, section 19 of the Act, then we'll talk about the direct registration in terms of professionalism. Moving down from the in the middle there, not necessarily in the middle, but under R01 POL, the extra documents that refers as called the R in front refers to registration documents. And R-01 POL PC, POL stand for policy, PC stand for professional categories. That's how you differentiate them. And then this is the overarching registration policy that also in there prescribes the qualification standards in terms of what we're talking about. So then the E series documents at EXA refers to education. All documents that start with the E, like for example, E-02, PE, PT, PTN, refers to the educational qualification standard. There are a variety of them, E-07, E-05, and so on and so on. Now in here, PE stands for professional engineer, PT stands for technologist, and PN stands for the technicians. So then it, this prescribes the qualification standard that is required in there. And we spoke about the alternative to the accredited programs or recognized programs. Then hence the E17 PRO. PRO there stands for process. So it's a process document that is used, which is called the recognition of educational qualifications that are not part of the accreditation system by EXA. Then moving backwards from the E17 PRO going back, this amplifies the education aspects of EXA down leading to 
again to RO1 policy, POLPC policy. Now, this policy, again, it prescribes the, pre the competency standards. It was prescribing what is needed as the stage one in terms of education. Now, on stage two, it, 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 it prescribes what is required in terms of the competency standard. We spoke about that, the R-02PE, the PN and PT, and so on. As we said, we'll only focus on the technicians, technologists, and engineers. Then again, equally so, R08 there at the, at the far right end, it explains the competency standard R02. So you cannot read or study R02 without R08 because R08 is a guide to the competency standard. So everything is explained in R08. Then equally so moving down further, there's R04 that we refer to 7 section point three point two that refers to the minimum registrant requirement duration, which is three years. And then this is the training and mentoring guide. It, ref it refers to the competency standard that for when they, up, they graduate or the engineering practitioners are in training or gathering the knowledge, they need to know what is required in R02. Hence, it does not take the responsibility thereof. It refers always to R02. And then moving further, then there's a reference to guide to the competency standard, which is the R05 disk. PEPTP, and I'll explain that R05, this DIS stands for discipline specific. So, this inside, for example, I'm from the civil engineering background, you'll have transportation engineering. Inside transportation engineering, you've got uh, roads, you've got uh, public transport, you've got the private transport, and you've got planning. So, it refers to that, that in your training, also look at the discipline specific training that you are doing. So, that's the guide there. But going back to R01 POL policy, there's the R03 PRO, which is the application and assessment process. This document helps when an applicant is ready to register with EXA or to apply for registration with EXA. Then it gives the assessment process thereof and the application process thereof. That in terms of how you should compile an application and also in terms of how you should um, know about the assessment process, how are you going to be assessed? So EXA is not hiding anything. It already tells you that you are going to be assessed in this manner, and this will be the expectations from you as an applicant. This um, is the, in terms of the qualifications and the level descriptor. We're going to look at the category of engineer. These are the qualifications, which are the benchmark that we all know, the Bachelor of Science in Engineering, the Bachelor of Engineering, or the Baccalaureus and the BSA, the BN, and I see that UJ, you are the only university in South Africa that presents the BN in that terminology, which is coming from the Latin word and translated to the Africans word. You know the history that coming the University of Johannesburg is a major between Technicon and Widows Rand and the uh, uh, Rand Africans University State. So hence this is coming from a legacy name that come from there. And then uh, that will now be given to the solving the complex engineering problems. We'll touch base on them. How do they differentiate from others? There's a new one that came on board, which is the Master of Engineering, and EXA is a qualification standard thereof, which is the E-22-PE. That uh, Master has not Master of Engineering is a professional master aligned to the professional registration. It is not a full research master's that is being done currently at the universities. This one is specifically for professional registration purposes. And then we go, we move further now to the uh, engineering technologist. We all know the B, the, the B tech, the one that is in the middle. The new B uh, kit on the block is the advanced diploma in, in the, the advanced diploma in engineering. That is from HEQSF, same as the MNG is from the HEQSF. And again, also the Bachelor of Engineering Technology. That is also from the HEQSF, which is the higher education qualification sub framework, contrary to the NATED 151 report. And that is for solving broadly defined engineering problems and solving them accordingly as such. And then for the engineering technician, the NATED 151 used to be the national diploma that has been phased out. Then we've got four new kids on the block. The advanced certificate in engineering, the advanced certificate in engineering practice, the diploma in engineering, and the diploma in engineering technology as well. That is the four solving the well-defined engineering problems. We'll touch base on the characteristics of these level descriptors. Very, very important in terms of the engineering background or engineering education that one receives that where does it lead to? in terms of professional registration. Again, we spoke about the training period that minimum of three years post qualification, and it takes generally longer than three years to acquire competencies. We have to face the fact we have done a study over the years and we have realized that. 
Not to say that it cannot be achieved within three years, but most of the time it takes more than three years. The imperative, it is imperative that training programs are well developed, managed and implemented by employer registered under the commitment and undertaking. EXA has got the CNU or commitment and undertaking in terms of assisting employer bodies to have a, a, a well-structured training program to make sure that they follow the letter because many people work there not under commitment and undertaking. Come the time for professional registration, it becomes a challenge as to but you have been working, yes, but you've not and never been following certain parameters of the requirements for professional registration. And then again, spending time on a particular element or training without a qualitative objective will not ensure achievement of the required level of competency for that level. We need to talk about this. This repetitive work is not taking the registered or the people that aspire to get registered with the Engineering Council of South Africa anyway. There has to be, coming from the third bullet above, a structured, developed, managed and implemented training program to ensure that there's progression in terms of engineering responsibility, there's progression in terms of the experience that is being um, achieved by the applicant will be in industry. This is the goal of the training program, as we spoke about it earlier. It is to allow the candidate to develop his or her competence to the point of being able to demonstrate the outcomes at the required level on a sustained basis and to take responsibility of the work performed. It, it is an ideal situation that will happen if the applicant or the candidate during their candidacy, they do not break that momentum of getting the experience in terms of the minimum three years post qualification experience that they stick to date to ensure that at the end of the day, you can see that the responsibility has been taken on the work performed by the applicant. The candidate's role, I think I take it that most of you in here today, students, you are you will be candidates or you are already candidates. Candidates will appreciate that the honors rest on them to ensure that training received will culminate in the competency defined in the standard. So you are the one getting registered, not your boss, not your supervisor, not your mentor, and not somebody who's looking after you, but you need to make sure that you are the one who makes sure that you get the relevant experience, the relevant information, and the relevant inquisitiveness that might be there. The supervisor will be the somebody who controls and directs your engineering work, and then who takes responsibility for the work in terms of section 18, subsection 4 of the APA. But again, the responsibility and the honor still lies with you as a candidate. And the supervisor is expected together with your mentor and to plan the training by task by task to develop the candidate's competence to review the achievement of each task. Very, very critical as well during that time that this has to be exercised, not to rock up after three years or after a certain period to the Engineering Council of South Africa that you like to register. They would like to see these historical events or institutional experience that you have built up as per the requirements before you come and register. The performance of functions of the competence in terms of the engineering practitioners are able to we are able to perform that function because of the following knowledge skills and attitude but that is that competence is developed by education that you will have the training and the experience so experience is gained in the training as you move along and this is how the development of the professional competence during the postgraduate period of training experience the applicant or candidate is in employment and works with under a supervision of a qualified engineering supervisors and professional mentors. So these people will take you along and take you their hand, your, uh, through by hand to ensure that you achieve the requirements. And a professional or mentor, uh, mentor guides the applicant in professional development with assistant of the engineering supervisor. So these two will work hand in hand in terms of the supervisor, the one that you work directly with. The mentor might not be somebody who sits in your office, like at current I'm mentoring almost 200, more than 200 uh, candidates out there that we normally meet on a, on, a, on a quarterly basis at times when needs be we meet earlier than that but the supervisor is that person who's 24 hours with you who's seeing what you are doing the training process may involve structured activities including induction and training courses on specific skills or technologies as well so let's now talk in terms of the definition of the competence of uh, of outcomes so there are 11 outcomes as i indicated earlier and those outcomes are conveniently grouped into five sets, but the stem of each outcome is the same in the competency standards for both the categories of engineer, engineering technologist, and engineering technician. And the competency standards are differentiated by the insertion of the level descriptor defined in the competency standard, which is R-02. We we'll talk about it and uh, as shown by the level of that descriptor in terms of how do they differ. 
So let's just go direct into them. You see here, we first start with group A. We said there are five groups, group A, group B, group C. Group A refers to the engineering problem solving. And as you can see here, all the categories are the engineers, engineering technologists, dedicated engineers, engineering technician, and the specified categories. So the stem thereof is the same. If you check just set one, it says define, investigate, and analyze broadly defined engineering problems in all of them. They're the same, just the difference is the level descriptor, looking at what the requirements are in terms of professor registration. So that is outcome one. Then outcome two is about design or develop uh, in terms of the level descriptor that will be there. And the third one under group A will be comprehension and application of knowledge in terms of the principles, specialist knowledge, the restriction and local knowledge in terms of that. What says over and above the work that you do, over and above the studies that you are doing, what is it that you have picked up in terms of comprehension that you can apply in terms of the that knowledge that is brought from there? So this is what makes up group A in terms of problem solving. Group B it refers to the managing engineer activities in terms of there are only two outcomes there, outcome four and five. Again, is managing part or all of the or more of the level descriptor of the engineer activities. It's only one. So communication does not have a level descriptor because communication is communication. So you need to communicate clearly with others in the course of your engineering activities and prove that when you apply with the Engineering Council of South Africa that you have achieved this outcome as well. Then outcome a group C refers to the two outcomes as well, which is outcome seven and outcome, I mean outcome six and seven. Let's first start with the outcome six, the recognition and addre the addressing of the reasonably foreseeable, either one, social, two, cultural, and three, environmental effects of the level descriptor that will be included there in terms of the engineer activities. Same as for outcome seven is to meeting the legal and regulatory requirements and protection of the health and safety of persons in the course of the level descriptor engineering activities. So these are in a nutshell the groups and the outcomes. In terms of group D, it refers to acting ethically, exercising judgment and taking responsibility. Then again, you'll see in terms of code of conduct and outcome, uh, I mean, outcome A, it refers to the conducting engineering activities ethically and not procurement engineering activities. And then outcome nine refers to the exercising of sound judgment in the course of your complex engineering, or broadly defined, or well defined, or specifically defined. But I think the question that will come would say, but um, that exercising of judgment, how is it proven? R-08 explains what is R in R-02P uh, in terms of the alignment of what is requested in terms of that assessing of judgment. Then outcome 10 is the responsibility for making decisions that stems from outcome 9. So if you check in a nutshell, outcomes 1, 2, and 3 under problem solving fits directly into here now in terms of outcome 8 and 9 in terms of the core of engineering, in terms of that responsibility that needs to be taken. Then last but not least, it's group E in terms of the initial professional development, whereby there has to be a philosophy of that the applicant or the graduate commit in training him or herself. And again, uh, the development activities that will be will be maintained, will be sufficient to maintain that and to extend that competence that is gained through the training period under the continued professional development. I spoke of uh, the progression of responsibility earlier that needs to be monitored. As I said, that the registration is something whereby the applicants need to build up their skills and update and update them. And then in here, it starts at the top in terms of level, as you can see. So it refers here to being exposed, assisting, participating, and contributing. When we spoke about the one year of engineer responsibility inside the experience, we're referring to level E. If you check level E, it refers to whereby there's a limited or the, there's no supervision at all on the graduate. The graduate has built up that confidence and experience in terms of being able to can work on their own, although there will be that appropriate level of uh, support that is coming from the supervisor, but at the very minimal level. And again, the expectation is that now the applicant was ready for registration. And hence, that's where it starts in terms of the nature of work, responsibility, and the level of support thereof. Again, something that we, we spoke about compared to the progression of engineer responsibility is the progression of competency level, and hence it comes after the experience part. This is in terms of appreciation, knowledge, experience, and capability. In the course of your training, other 
um, outcomes only require appreciation thereof to have that general appreciation of the subject matter. Others indicate to have that sufficient knowledge on the subject matter. Others require experience, others require capability. Those can be checked and found out to make sure that don't spend too much time on an item or an activity that is going to lead you to only for appreciation and having it missed a bigger chunk to the one that will be taking you for the capability that is required in terms of the competence level. I touch base again on the characteristics of, um, we spoke about the complex, we spoke about the broadly defined, we spoke about the well-defined engineering problems. How, what are the characteristics? How are those differentiated? And here I also need to have utmost attention so that we can clear the air. There has to be questions asked in terms of what are those characteristics that to be there. Let's start with step one. Identifying the engineering problem. Is the problem an engineering problem? Does the, so, does the solving the problem require in-depth fundamental and specialized engineering knowledge? So those questions need to be answered in terms of that to say that this applicant meets the requirements there. And again, others that are there. For example, in step two, uh, it, the criteria will be the problem is ill posed under or over specified and requires identification and refinement as it is in terms of that comparing to the others we'll see when we get there how is that problem uh, approached and how is that problem attended to as per the level of edu engineering education that one might have not to impede the person and again if you check in the document r02 again this comes to the fore in terms of the characteristics there of that needs to be answered in terms of the scope of activities that may entire the entire complex uh, system or complex subsystem and may extend beyond the previous experience so that is the unfamiliar scenarios now we need to understand something complex does not mean complicated so these are the characteristics that are not coming from a dictionary but what kind of what you expected then equally so for the broadly defined engineering problems you'll see there's a, there's a step there's a main question there's a criteria if i go to step number two it says the problems in post, and if you go back to here, it says the problems in post under or over specified and requires identification and refinement. Let's see what is here. It says now requires the identification and refinement into the technology area because this is for the technology specialists. So all of them have been separated and differentiated as such, but those questions need to be answered. Equally so for the well-defined that is for the technician, this one is different now. It talks of the factors that may be solved mainly by practical engineering knowledge that is underpinned by related theory and are largely de defined but may require clarification as well so this is how these three uh, categories are differentiated in terms of well defined broadly defined and complex it's the same there so this is just a schematic representation that shows what happens in exa i'll just give you a simple scenario as a candidate when you come from an uh, credit program you submit your application, four page or six page application, you fill in, pay your fees, attach the ID copy, attach the proof of qualification once, whoops, then you come, you, you register as a, as, a, as, a, as a candidate. On the professional side, then how the system works is that your application will be given to four assessors, that to the, which are the peers in the group, in, in the system. Those four assessors will do an evaluation and they'll give their reports and they don't know other, other members do not know who's got the same application or not. And then they submit their individual application uh, outcome or, re, or results to EXA. And then EXA will appoint one or two registered persons in terms of the, being a moderator to overview and oversee the process at that early stage of the ex experience appraisal. If it's an ideal situation, then the moderator will uh, support it and it moves further to the next step, which is the professional review. In the professional review, that's when you go, the, the graduate will then meet the three reviewers then who are going to have a face to face either via the online digital platform or face to face in the office in terms of making sure that that was, was submitted at the beginning is being owned by you as an applicant that is your own work in here now you need to demonstrate competence in front of those reviewers again in the ideal world this will go to the moderator and then the i mean the excel appoint again two moderators and the moderators will decide but there's also a buffer in there that exa built in that at the experience appraisal stage if the applicant is unable to meet the requirements of registration is either unable unable to write or other way they can request for resubmission in writing or request the applicant attend the experience appraisal interview so that they can guide the applicant in terms of where they are falling short the worst case scenario will be competency not indicated that stage means the applicant cannot be registered to 
other reasons that might be there. But this is how the mandate works. So, and in terms of the appeal, there's only one body that can hear, listen to the appeal that is coming inside EXA and that is cancelled. But again, the CB Act compels EXA to those unresolved um, disputes or appeals to be tailored by them as the overarching professional body that is looking after these six councils. So that is in a nutshell in terms of this. So once um, registration has been given or recommended, then it will go to the registration officers inside EXA, then they will inform the council on high education that these are the few students that went through the process or through the system. So this is how in a nutshell that is. And then this is how this, the, the certificate will look like. If you have a look at the certificate, the digital certificate that will be given. And please make sure that you've got a proof, a check with EXA like the department uh, or the business unit where Ms. Palesa Maketa is from the st st stakeholder relations and marketing to make sure that it's not something that has been copied and your name has been tested. They've got a, a security code that they use to check on this certificate. Again, this has been given in terms of how one can uh, identify the registration certificates. They say there are two legal persons, EXA offices that can commission a copy of the certificate post via the, the verification by the, the registration department. And this provision is found in section 18 of the Electronic Communication and Transaction Act of 2002, and number 25. For any additional information, these are the people that are there, Mr. Zueli Langa and Ms. Valentine Lofu. Ms. Valentine Lofu is the manager for registrations, and Mr. Zueli Langa is the registration officer. Because there are many of those that are out there in industry and to where people are taking chances. We spoke earlier about the accords, and I just want to touch base on the relation in terms of the International Engineer Alliance, the International Register. This register is open to any extra registered professional. So first we have to register with extra post three year qualification and who meets the requirements for the competence agreement as per the IA rules and procedures. And then EXA maintains the International Register for Engineers, Engineering Technologists, and Engineering Technicians. So the other cadres, which is the Professional Certificate Engineer and the specified categories are not recognized by the International Engineer Alliance. And there's nothing wrong with them. They are suited for the market in South Africa and they're doing a great, great job for where they are suited. It's just that at the International Engineer Alliance, it is something else, a totally different ball game. And the registers, these registers are regulated by the three competency agreements. In the education part, we spoke about the Washington Accord for Engineers, the um, Sydney Accord for the Technologies, and the Dublin Accord for the Technicians. But here we've got the International Professional Engineers Agreement or IPA and the International Engineering Technologies Agreement for the uh, in International Engineering Technologies and the A8, which is the Agreement for International Engineering Technicians. I served uh, at the International Engineering Alliance for the past eight years, uh, since 2013 to 2021. And then I was uh, the deputy chair for four years of the AITA and I also became the chair for the remainder of the four years. So I've got the full conversant information and background of how the system operates at the International Energy Alliance and how it links back to where EXA is sitting. So it says each member of the IEA or the signatory keeps its own section of the International Register within. So once you register with EXA, you become on the National Register. Once you register internationally with IEA, you become on the International Register. And these are the International Registers that as they are, they show that the post numerals that are used behind are the for the professional, international professional engineer, over and above the PR range will be INT, PESA, and so on and so on for the technologies and for the technician as well. So these are the recognized uh, postnomials inside the International Engineering Alliance. So this is just to give a background in terms of how can an, an a, a, a registered person with EXA register on the International Register. is to meet the competence agreement standards and the interested party shall demonstrate or meet the following requirements have an academic qualification accredited or recognized by EXA, including those recognized through the relevant accords for that category, be professionally registered with EXA in the relevant category, have a minimum period of seven years practical experience since graduation, and have a minimum of two years in the responsible charge for significant engineering work. Let me just stop there, pause there for a moment and differentiate the two. Um, it, at home nationally to register with EXA is minimum period of three years post qualification and minimum of one year in a responsible engineering position. Now in here it is seven years and two years. For example, I'll give uh, New Zealand as an example. In New Zealand, they said nobody's going to register before seven years. So you register after seven years, not three years, you get both registrations simultaneously as a professional at home like PRN and also to get INTP 
this one on the international on, on the international register as well at the same time and to make to show that you have maintained your professional computing professional development at that satisfactory level so this is the same as what we indicated there but now going this into the form as it you have to complete the form as it states and again, these are the requirements that will be going the form. The following documents will be required. Completed a prescribed application form and a completed experience report, summary of the experience reports and the referee reports and the record of CPD. And again, the application fee that that we did. Over and above the international registers, there's also something referred to as the mutual recognition of the agreements, whereby uh, countries outside the IEA have met and recognized each other work and their registered people. So these jurisdictions that have got that mutual recognition with X are Engineers Australia, Engineers Ireland, and the Engineering Council UK. And they, through this, they've agreed that such registered people of at least at least certain period of each of the parties to these agreements will be accorded corresponding registration of either on the receipt of their duly completed acceptable application form. Meaning that if you're registered with, uh, in South Africa and you want to go to uh, Australia, whenever, without the going through the international register, there will be that mutual recognition of, recogni of recognizing each other, same professional registration thereof. So there are two ways of doing that, getting to that level. We also touched base in terms of the relationship with the voluntary associations. So that was about international. In terms of the extra relies because it, the act compels extra to recognize the the engineering voluntary associations. And there's a list of them that I mentioned that they work together as peers for the same common goal in terms of the engineering profession. So EXA as the regulator relies on the professional uh, societies. Those are the fountains of knowledge to make sure that the, the assessors, the reviewers and moderators that come from there and accreditors as well have the insight of how this works. As you can see, the functions of EXA is to set standards, accredit the engineering program, the register people with registered the regulated professional conduct, act in the interest of the public, and advise government as such. So where the learning base is in terms of, for example, the continued professional development will not be inside EXA because EXA cannot be the revenue player at the same time, will be with the NGA, the voluntary associations or the VAs. You heard that they mentioned earlier, Ms. Maketa mentioned that I'm a member of a few of them. I see two of them are appearing here. And as you can see the plus there under the Chamber of Engineering Technology means A plus others. All of them are mentioned here. So that is it uh, from my side for today in terms of the road to registration. And I'm going to take back and give uh, back to Ms. Precious Maputle. Thank you very much for listening. Sure, okay. And uh, wrap up. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Tate Jones Mulesane. That was a very, very informative um, presentation. Um, as usual, very valuable for our students. I see some of them have already sent me emails requesting a copy of the presentation. Would you be able to commit to sharing the slides with me to I share with the students? Uh, Ms. Ma uh, Maketa is in the audience, so you'll have to liaise with them and Ms. Uh, is this in this way, Rebecca. Yeah, they, they will be the ones who can help you. Okay, with the presentation slide. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, um, no problem. I'm going to open the virtual floor for questions. So mm -hmm. let's start with Am Baloy. Please unmute yourself and raise your question. Okay. Thank you, uh, Precious. And thank you, sir, for the good presentation. You know, uh, I've learned a lot from uh, whatever that you were presenting to us. Thank you. But thank I have one question that I want to ask um, ask you. Uh, I I took the academic route. I did my national diploma, did my BTEC. But with national diploma, back then we used to do like one year in service training. And I happened to work for CSIR for six months. And that was it. And I decided to become a, a lecturer since 2010 up until now, but I want to register with EXA. Um, with EXA. So I, I am not sure uh, if you guys or EXA will require me to, you know, do the evidence and, and everything, you know, the issue of GAs or the outcomes that you're talking about, I do actually understand that, but I want an advice. What, what do I do right now as an academic who have more experience on teaching and learning? 
uh, or I actually work for UJ anyway. So uh, Precious is my colleague. So uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure where to start. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. That's why I, I was going to, to request that maybe uh, clarify your question because I'm also lost at what is the question? Okay, for us as academics, can we still register with X? Yeah, you ask a very, I, I had a session with uh, VUT last week on the same. I think let's clarify that issue and uh, I think it will assist a lot of people. Okay. Um, let, 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 me, let me paint a scenario. Uh, the teachers day one, uh, they go to a teacher's college, they get a teacher's qualification or they go to universities like UJ and then there they come up with a diploma in education or a bachelor of education and they are teachers and they go and register with the South African Council for Educators. Problem solved. They don't bother anyone. They're in their lane. They stay in their lane. Now, a lecturer must go to the lecturer's council or an academic must go to the academic council, register with the academics, don't bother anyone. Technical people who've got technical qualification, there's only one board in the country, that is the Engineering Council of South Africa. They must go there, register with that one, don't bother anyone. Problem solved. So now, a lecturer, before they become lecturer and they are hiding behind lecturing, or academics. That's not true. First, you're a technical person. You're not a le lecturer. is the work that you do. You're a technical person. You don't have a lecturing qualification. You don't have an academic qualification. What makes you to be say, I've got because you, you have a qualification that proves you to do that. So remove that thing of say because you are an, you're, you are doing academic work. You follow that competence that you gathered at CSIR, meeting the 11, 11 outcomes of uh, the requirement as we indicated there will ultimately allow you or make you legible to register with EXA. The work that you do there, test it against the 11 outcomes. What, I, what, is, what is very fair and what I like about what is present, what is at the EXA is that nowhere it say you must have worked in industry, you must work in construction, you must work in consulting. They say you need to meet the 11 outcomes. Simple as that. Sorry, before I go, there was a message in the chat, somebody saying, I, they, I cannot hear you. I, are you all able to hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. So the, 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 the academics haven't tested the system. The system just say, do you meet the 11 requirements? How you meet is something else. They are not being prescriptive as how it should be made. The prior experience before coming to academia plays a very big role. The experience that you gain, that meet the 11 requirements in academia plays a big role. So the academics or those that are doing academic or academic work or call themselves academia or, or academics or that are, are, are lecturers, to make life easy, then go to lecturing council, register there, don't bother exam. But it does not exist because first, you don't have a lecturing qualification. You don't have that what makes you to be a bachelor of academia or bachelor of lecturing you have a technical qualification. And EXA does not have a specified category for the academics. They don't have a specified category for contractors. They don't have a specified category for the consultants. So consulting is the work that you do. It does not define your profession. In the profession, you are still a technical person, either with a diploma in engineering, either with a Bachelor of Engineering Technology in Engineering, or either with the Bachelor of Science in Engineering or the Bachelor of Engineering or the Baccalaureus Engineers VSA, or the new Masters in Engineering that hasn't been tested as such at EXA. I hope I answered your question, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. You know, the answer, I've already had it because whenever I talk to my students, I tell them that I am an industrial engineer who's offering yes. my services. Yes. I'm offering my services to the yes. University of Johannesburg yes. and I am titled as a lecturer, you know. Yes. But yes, thank you. I, I will actually start my route to actually um, apply to be a candidate yes. and while I'm actually gathering my evidence as yeah. a professional industrial engineer offering yeah. my services to UJ. Thank you. Pleasure. But you don't have to register as a candidate. You can register direct. A candidate is for those that immediately finish studying now oh. and, and then they, they, they register within one year. Those just are yeah. fresh. For you with a lot of experience, register directly. A, a candidate registration is not mandatory. It is a good thing to do so that you are guided through the process. But for you, You've passed through that stage. You've accumulated so much experience that put it to the test. Download the application form, 
check the 11 outcomes. They've got criterion 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. .1 Read what is required and fit the information in. And I can tell you, when you apply the exercise, if, where there are gaps or deficiencies, they will guide you in terms of what is missing and how this can be achieved. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate it. Pleasure. Um, I'm going to ask Tando Monzo to unmute themselves and raise their question. Tando Monzo. Hello. Um, thank you for that insightful presentation, uh, Mr. Jones and Maputo. Yes, Thanks. Um, actually, I wanted I wanted to ask in terms of the masters. Um, yes. At some point, I wanted to. I'm actually a professionally registered technologist, mm. um, and I wanted to register as an engineer. Um, and then I was told that EXA doesn't recognize um, MEng because I have MEng. Um, so I see that you mentioned that you can actually um, register with an MEng. Currently, I'm busy with my doctoral qualification, um, and I've got like more than seven years experience post the MEng. So um, I wanted to know: is there any way I could be accredited, or? Yeah, accredited for, for my experience um, on my route. OK, yeah, let's differentiate. Uh, the, thanks for the for the question. The M -Eng that you have is the one that is not recognized by EXA. It's not the one that is not accredited. It's not accredited by EXA. It's the master's that is done by the university. Nothing wrong with it for research purposes and your development of accumulation of knowledge. Then the one that we are referring to is in it's in E-22-PE series, e series document that is, is totally structured for registration and processing. What they have done, when we did that, I was part of the task team that developed it. We took the final year of the four-year or five-year b -Eng program, the Bachelor of the one that is offered at the Kingsway campus and uh, at UJ, and factored in there. It has got a, a research component as well, so that when you pitch up there, you pitch up the same way as the students that went through the four-year Bachelor of Engineering or the five-year BSc program that is directed, or in, in UJ, you call it the BN or the Baccalaureus Engineers VSA, the one that is aligned for professional, for candidate en uh, engineer registration. So that is where the STEM is coming from. So the one that you have then, if you want it to be recognized, there's nothing wrong. Then you have, if you remember, when I spoke about the qualifications, I spoke about the combination of qualifications. You have the diploma that is recognized by X accredited. You have the BTEC that is recognized by X. Then add the MNG as part of the combination. Then EXA will say, okay, this other one we do not know. Then you go through the educational background evaluation in terms of that to check. Does it meet the requirements to allow you, same as the, the graduates that have got the BNG qualification for candidate engineer or for the engineer requirements in terms of the complex work that we have done in there? If you don't mind, you can take that exercise, take that route, apply. So they'll take the combination thereof and add them in there. And then you'll say, OK, out of these three combinations, plus your experience, do you meet the minimum requirement for substantial equivalence to go in that route? That's what they will do. So the, the names look the same, M -Eng, but hence I'm saying the one that you have, if we ask which extra standard was that calculated around, there's no extra standard because they did not recognize that one. The one that is new or the one that is HHQSF aligned has never been tested. And you can just take your take it easy or and check on the EXA website is e-22-pe dash dash that's the qualification standard and tap what is in there that differentiates it from the one that you have it has got also 180 credits one year uh, that in there just to make sure that it also meets the requirements of a master's at the nqf level nine masters but this one is totally different it's only professional masters for registration purposes Thank you so much. Thank um, you for Dr. That. Jones, so, can I just take your last one moment? Sorry, do you so, have sorry, time beyond your uh, question? Uh, sorry for uh, intruding. Just one moment. Uh, Dr. Jones, do you have time beyond half past 11 to be addressing questions yes, at length? Yes, yes, yes. You can go so unless okay. quarter two is fine. Okay, thank you. Um, sorry to turn over back to you, yes. 
Okay, so I just wanted to know how long does it take to do that? Uh, you said E-22 slash, can you please? Uh, no, not slash, dash, I just... dash, E-22 dash, dash P-E. Dash P-E, all right. Yeah, you find it on the Excel so website. So how long does it take to do that? I do not work for Excel, remember, when they introduced okay. me, I do not know how the process works inside Excel. I'm not an employee right, of Excel, the officials will know, but you can contact them, drop them an email. Their, their contact details are available on the website. They will direct to the information department that they can tell all of that, how long will that take. Is that fine, ma'am? Yes, thanks a lot. Thank you, Noah. Noah Fakude, you can kindly unmute your mic and raise your question. For uh, yes, sir. Yeah, okay. I also have a I don't know if you will pick, uh, you will pick it up. Um, I'm coming here with a long way because I'm starting I'm from a technical background. Okay, I've just muted Noah. I don't know if it's me or if his, if his mic is not clear. Can you hear him, Dr. Jones? No, I, I can hear him, but he, he, he keep on cutting. Okay, Noah, may I kindly ask you to type your question in the chat box so my question has to be a bit shaky. Uh, we will look at your question in the chat box. While you type the question, I'm going to move over to Mam Bunny DMY. Kindly raise your hand and uh, raise your question. Unmute your mic. Good day, or oh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I, I feel like I have lots and lots of questions, but I'll just mention a few of them, just with, with respect to time. Okay, one of the questions that I have is, um, if you want to register as a candidate, like engineer, how much does it cost like, to do that registration? And then one other question that I have is, um, does it, depends on certain companies to say, um, if let's say maybe you've, you've gained experience from these specific companies, you'll be eligible to get access to register. Um, obviously, let me, let me put it as in like the professional slots, as in like, um, okay, regardless of, of the candidate part. Um, mm -hmm. Another question that I have is, Maybe rephrase that one in terms of the candidate. I'm, I'm not getting clear. Okay. In terms of the company. Like I'm trying to understand, Corey, like do you have specific companies that you look at to say if you've gained experience from, from this specific company, you are eligible to, to register according to EXA. And then like let's say maybe um, on the, you said you have two, two categories, right? The candidate part, the professional part. So I'm basically referring to the professional part. And then coming back to the candidate part, um, I want to understand, let's say maybe you, you have experience as in like a tutor for many years, like with a certain institution. Does that form part of like gaining new eligibility like to register as, as a candidate engineer or should I say the professional part per se? Or does it really refer to, to the matter of saying for you to register as a candidate engineer, you are only eligible to do that if only you have a, an accredited qualification with a certain institution, obviously by, by EXA. I'm not sure if my okay. question is yeah. Okay, yeah, Let, let's start with the first one. The one with the cost, uh, the costs are available on the EXA website. Like for example, yesterday was their last day of financial year. So the cost of last year, are gone. They've got new cost now. Every first first of April is their new financial year. So that you can find on the EXA website. That is easy. Secondly, um, what you are asking is, is simple. You need to test it and uh, apply. So remember, EXA is not about, it does not matter which company you're working for. Are you doing engineering work as an engineering council of South Africa, looking at the engineering profession? So that, that's, what, that's what matters. Secondly, it's not about being a tutor. 
is about the engineering work to meet the 11 requirements. And uh, especially from you that are working in academia, if you don't test the system, you'll never get the answers. Apply and see if you meet the, the requirements or not. If you don't, then you'll be advised and you'll be alerted to as to where the, short, uh, the shortcomings are. Okay, thank you for your pleasure. I think it's clear. Okay. It seems Ms. Maputle is no, no longer with us. I, I'm, I'm just going to go through the order. I see the numbers. Number one is Mutombe Nintako, DHQ. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Jones. Uh, pleasure. Presentation. I have I have a set of questions, but uh, one of the members had already asked uh, one that relates to the MN. Um, I'm a bit confused because I tried to go through the the, the standard, the E22 PE. It does not which necessarily. One? Which standard? E-22 dash PE. The qualification standard. Yes. Yeah. I wanted to understand if this professional masters is it being offered by any institution that you are aware of, or is it something that gets designed to meet the credits? Yeah, the that University of Johannesburg were the first one to raise their hands that would like it to get calculated. Since then, we haven't had. Maybe it was a pipe dream is still coming. How long the pipe is, we don't know. So currently, there isn't any in South Africa that offers that particular um, professional masters. Yeah, I can say that uh, so because I'm the deputy chair of the High Impact Committee of Council, the Education Committee. We haven't had any, but I remember some years ago, University of Johannesburg raised their hand, and then since then we never had anything. Maybe it's still coming. Maybe they are doing it. We don't know. Okay. So uh, my second question relates to the BS Tech Honors because I saw on the I would say uh, the route to be to become a PR candidate mm. as a technologist. It's, it refers to a BS Tech Honors. I tried to check on the internet. The only one that seems to offer it is UNISA. So I wanted to check if that is recognized by EXA as a legitimate level or. Yeah, uh, good, good question. Good question. Let I think. It, are you done with your questions, or do you still have other one, other questions? Uh, I think I can conclude it there. Okay. Thank you very much for the excellent question, especially on the honors. Let's let's explain the route. Um, from the base will be the Bachelor of Engineering Technology, the BNG Tech. And then from there you need the, the so the BNG Tech will allow you to register as a technologist, engineering technologist, day one. So that's, that's sorted out, or eligibility as a candidate. And then you need to, when you need to get to the next level from technologies is the, the engineer part. So to the engineer, then you need the MNG. But before you get to the MNG, you need the, the Bachelor of Engineering Honors. So when the, when the universities or the high institution of learning curriculate and they want to get their MNG recognized, EXA does not only look at the MNG, they look at the honors, but the honors on its own does not take you anywhere. It's a, it's a standalone, it's a, it's, a, it's a sandwich between the BNG and the BNG tech and the MNG. You follow? So you cannot use the honors for registration of any, you're already a technologist. After technologies come engineer. Engineer needs what? It needs the MNG. Okay, so is is there are there any, any institutions that are currently accredited to offer that one year to on us? Yes, there are. You can check on their website. Yeah, they, they, they are in the country. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Pleasure, sir. You may lower your hand. And then we've got the next one. I'm taking over for uh Ms. Maputle Lusanda DB in bracket student. Unmute and let's have a chat. Uh, uh good morning, sir. Uh, morning, sir. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you. Um I I my situation is a bit uh, confusing. I registered uh, uh, as a candidate uh, technician when I was doing my practicals for a diploma. Um after that um I came back to school for BTEC. Uh, then I didn't go back to work because I couldn't find work, which means I couldn't exactly register as a technologist. Um, then I continued with my master's uh, studies. Now I'm doing my PhD studies and I haven't worked um, after the BTEC. So if I were to register, how would that go for me? 
if I were to even think about registering, um, what 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 uh, experience would I have to include in the, or can I even register as a, a professional technologist right now, or a candidate technologist? Or what's what's the story? Because I did my BTEC in 2015, so it's been years since I did uh, the 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 BTEC. Mm. That's my only question. Thank you. Yeah, as I said, and I'll keep on repeating this, test the system, apply, download the application from, from the EXA website, check if you comply with the, the minimum requirements under the criterion. So you saw there on the presentation attached high level in terms of the outcome. What each outcome has got sub criterion, for example, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, and they clearly indicate there what are the requirements. So it's to make sure that you meet those requirements. Where you don't meet them, EXA will advise you. But anything is like that. If we don't test, the system will never know. So rather apply and hear from EXA. OK, thank you. Uh, we've got Jafta, is it Jafta Namanyani in brackets SR. Sorry, precious uh, Ms. Maputa, I took over when you were not there to so that we can move and save time. Yeah, thank you very much, Jones, for the information uh, session. Mm. Um, yeah, I've submitted my professional registration with uh, with EXA, and I'm anticipating a, a professional review very soon. So I would like to do a mock uh, interview or presentation with you, but I couldn't see any of your personal uh, details on the invitation. No, I, I'm, I'm OK, it's easy. I'm conflicted. I'm a council member at EXA, and I'm also part of the registration um and i also do the training and i also uh, um prepares the assessors and moderators and reviewers so it will not be me i'm conflicted already all right thanks okay yeah there are, there are other many people out there that uh, if and uh, that those that are not uh, like i'm heavily involved with exa work so i'm highly conflicted yeah it will be difficult for me to be the referee and the player at the same time because also right. ex ex expect from me to assist them on the assessment review and the professional reviews. All right, no, thanks. Okay then, thank you. I see Ms. Maputa is also, uh, I'll take over then, let us drop your hand, Jafta, and go to Wandile Kumalo. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Sure, I, my laptop just crashed. Oh, um, sorry about it. Okay. But I believe you've been handling it well. Yes, yes, we've been moving on. Would you like to continue as such, or do you want me to assist? Uh, that's why I said I borrowed the time. I don't want to intrude. I'm just a visitor here. <laughs> <laughs> it's OK. Um, who's next? Uh, Miss Susan Mashu? No. no, it's one it's delay. actually I'm... one delay, the next person. Okay. In order. I think okay. I'll, Thank you. I'll leave it to you, Dr. Jones, to. OK, that's fine then. Thank you. If you give me the room. Morning, morning, Dr. Jones. Uh, thank you for morning. a great uh, presentation. I actually enjoyed it. It kept me awake through through the whole presentation. I'm happy. Uh, so I wanted to ask you. Um, I work. Uh, I worked at the mines. So I just wanted to ask, what is the relationship between EXA and you know the MR, uh, the EMRU and the GCC program? And um, my second question is. With regards to the international registration, if you already registered as a certified engineer, can you register maybe because I've got a BTEC um, as a, um, a, a a professional technologist in order to? Can you register for both? That's what I'm trying to ask as a, a, a professional technologist and a certified engineer. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for the question. The you're asking the relationship between, if you check that we spoke of the certificated engineers, the certificated engineers are those that have the government certificate of competency. Now, it's a challenging one because a diploma graduate who's registered with EXA will also be registered as a certificated professional certificated engineer. They, and then there's no certificated technician or otherwise or certificated technologies, just certificated engineer. But by virtue thereof is because of the government certificate of competency. And then the if you are registered as a professional engineering technologist, 
then you can register with the International Engineer Alliance on the International Register, and then you'll get the postnomial INT um, e, uh, SA, the one that I indicated there on the last on the slide. So you can do that, yes. So I can register for both as a yes, you, but yeah, but the certificate engineer is not recognized internationally. It's only it's, yes, it's yes. in peculiar animal, yeah. Okay, and yeah, but like, because like I said, the, what's the relationship between uh, uh, EXA and the, 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 the GCC and the EMBRA? Because there seems to be a disconnect, especially no, no, no. for uh, candidates. No, there's no disconnect. That's what I'm saying. What if you are registered, they, when you've got the, the government certificate of competence, you can register with EXA as the professional certificated engineer. Okay. Yeah. No, thank you, Hamza. Okay, then. pleasure. It's now uh, Mashiku Susan. Thank you, Ntate Moloisane. Langutwa, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Um, you spoke, you... Uh, is he gone? He's gone. Uh, I got a message that you have been removed from this meeting. I don't know who removed me then, but I'm back. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. It was not me. Um, uh, during your presentation, you showed us a professional development model from mm. um, being a student to being a candidate, and then from candidate, you become a professional. So in my case, I studied, um, did my national diploma, and did my BTEC, but I never had a chance to register as a candidate because of unforeseen circumstances. But I have the three-year uh, post um, professional working. I've worked in a, uh, before. I've worked. I'm working and I've worked before. So I wanted to understand: Is it possible for me now to just jump in and register as a professional uh, technologist uh, yes. currently now? But I wanted to understand the, tip, the steps that I'll have to undertake be, um, in order to do that. Will there be any difference? Will it be difficult for me to do that, to register now, to undertake that? And the second question is, um, it says that you need to have an internal mentor at your company who can actually assist you in, in acquiring this professional technology status. And if there is no such person... How does one go about actually um, doing that in a more swiftly way? You know, uh, they are there at work. Where I work, I work in a consulting company now. Um, but I don't feel that so adequate for me to actually register. I am responsible for most of the thing. I do tasks by my own, um, but I don't know if they're adequate. So those are the two questions. I've worked. I want to register now as a professional. I've never been a candidate. So, yeah. No problem, yeah. Uh, as okay. I, I, I indicated earlier, it is not necessary that you become a candidate. A candidate is a it's an ideal thing, but many people are not candidates and they still get registered who come direct and register professionally. So, yes. the candidate was meant for, if you finish studying today, tomorrow you register with as a candidate, that you are taken through the process, either under a structured training, via the commitment and undertaking or a structured program. But if you did not go through that for whatever reason that it is, it's not a train smash. Candidate registration is not compulsory. It's something okay. that assists you to go. Like for example, if you train somebody as a, for learner's license, they did not go through driving school. Nobody will stop them to get a driver's license because <laughs> if they pass the driving, they get through. It's the same thing. So nobody must go through a, a, a registered driving school for learners, that's what I'm trying to get to. So nobody, okay. it's not a must that you must become a candidate. It's not mandatory. Okay. It's, a, it's a thing that acts are built in to assist, but they're trying to revive it now to make it mandatory, maybe in years to come and see where it goes, but it's not because the experience that you've gained is the experience that you have. So it's up to you now, how do you write that experience in an application form to meet the 11 outcomes that we have presented? Okay. Yes. And your second one with regards to the mentor, the mentor issue was on the candidates that they go through that structure. If you don't have a mentor, you don't need a mentor when you register professionally. It's not a requirement, mm -hmm. but you need a referee. Now, a referee, again, is not somebody who is in your workplace. You can be a ref you can have a referee 
of some of, of from another company, the people who know what you are doing. The referee will be somebody who can vouch to say, yes, Ms. Susan Mashi, who is, is be able to do this work, they are able of your capabilities and your competencies. Okay. Yes. Okay. No, I understand. That's how easy it is to register with Excel. <laughs> no, if you say so. But thank you. That was a uh, pleasure. I'm very, I'm happy. I'm happy about the information. Thanks. Okay. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Then we've got. Uh, I'm not. Uh, is Max Shane Musala? Oh, maybe I'm. I don't know. But it's Max Shane Musala. Sorry if I pronounce it incorrectly. No, thanks. Thanks, Mr. Jane. Uh, Mr. Jones, it's McShane Masala. But oh, thank okay. you for the presentation. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Jones, as you said, with regards to the M edge, you took a component and then moved it to the master's part. The what I heard from Exa when I inquired, the idea for bringing in the M edge was that for the BS, for the for the professional route to the to become a professional engineer. The qualification is 560 credits. And if you only take the BNG Tech honors, it was giving you less than the 560 credits. Therefore, you could only register once you have exceeded the credits that will enable you to register as an engineer. Hence, they said, let's put in the master's program by professional coursework so that you can get the professional the, the, the additional credits even though they would exceed uh, the required credits. But the difficulty that I have now of, uh, I don't know, is it in the process of being reviewed or what? The BNG Tech Honors at UJ, it, when, when, you, when, you, when you add the credits, they, it actually goes up to 580 because the BNG Tech Honors goes to, I think uh, for something, when you add them, then it goes to 580. So, I wanted to 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 get clarity there. Um, was it the issue of the qualification per se, or was it the issue of the credits? Mm, okay, thank you. The issue was not the credits as per se; it was the content inside. The the teaching at the complex level compared to the broadly defined and well defined. That's where it stemmed from. That the students that come from the technology route either the diploma or the BNG Tech or the BTEC do not have those fundamentals of physics, maths and chemistry and the teaching in terms of the first principles. That's where it came from. Remember, the, B, the BNG Tech honors is not meant for any registration purposes. You get it? So uh, let, let's clarify it like I clarified earlier. The BNG honors, B, the BNG Tech the, at the beginning, the base is the one that is used for registration as a candidate engineering technologist. And then is the, is the M end. But before you get to the M end for engineer, there's something that is required in between, that is the honors. So the honors is not a standalone qualification for any professional registration. So it cannot be counted like you counted. When you say honors, I expect you to say plus the M end, then we can talk. Like the way you said now, you are halfway. I'm still waiting to add the M end. So you cannot add the honors to the BNG and say they've got 560 credits. The teaching in the honors is not aligning you to the requirement for registration as a candidate engineer. Thank, thank you, Mr. Jones. Uh, 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 there was one candidate that asked about the MNG. Is it currently offered anywhere by coursework? At VIRTS, VIRTS do offer it. I've, 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 I've looked through it. Um, they do provide that uh, MNG by professional coursework. Yeah, but is it aligned? Is it accredited by EXA? That's what you must ask. Universities have got the autonomy of offering any qualification. What you must check with them, is this the M -Eng that is aligned? Any there are universities that offer coursework masters. I've went through a coursework master M -Eng, which is not aligned to registration. You must verify, be careful. It might not be the one that is required by EXA. So always make sure that is the one that is accredited by EXA. No, thanks, Mr. Jones. That's a very good point because uh, the others, they also offer engineering management. It is by coursework, but it's actually not the actual one by EXA where they need the, the technical one. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Just verify with them. Thank yeah. you, sir. Poland, okay. Poland. The Polish don't want to accept the black people. Nobody says it's going to fall behind the head. It's a term that is fine for South African. We are praying. Who's next now? 
Uh, um, you can lower your hand. And then let's have, is it in, uh, in front of Futi? Not able to see. Yep. Hey, uh, good, good morning, sir. Morning. Uh, okay, like um, I was a bit late in the meeting because of my network was acting up. Um, I'm sorry if like I'm gonna ask something that you already answered. Mm. Um, I'd like to ask about uh, is uh advanced diploma now? Like after national diploma, since the BTEC is being phased out, there's this other program that is called advanced diploma. I wanted to ask if advanced diploma it is accredited by by EXA also and my my second question is that uh what are the advantages of exa accreditation in terms of workplaces now thank you okay i think let's start with the second one what do you mean workplaces okay like what 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 i wanted to ask is that like what is the advantage of registering with exa how will it benefit you if you are working yeah, uh, I'm not sure if you are aware of the identification of engineering work. Are you aware of that? Uh, uh, I, I would say like um, I'm just a new graduate. I don't know much about Excel. Yeah, just do yourself a favor. You can get it on the Excel, on the website just through Google. Just type yes. the identification of engineering work. You'll see the Gazette document that was Gazette in March 2021. By from I'm taking the correction from 2025. If you are not registered with EXA, you're not allowed to touch any engineering work. Okay, okay, I hear you now, sir. You get it? Yes, I get yeah. it. Your first question: Advanced diploma, yes, is recognized by EXA, is accredited by EXA because it's NQF level seven for technologies, the engineering technologies. So, like after after like I'm 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 done with my my BNG, my I mean my advanced diploma. After I go do my my postgrad diploma, uh, it will be a, a necessary for me to go do uh, masters because of I just said you talking about uh, honors. I mean um, honors is not uh, going alone. It has to go with masters. Yes, correct. So, correct. So so, so with postgraduate diploma, it goes with the master. So with a postgraduate diploma. You cannot register. It's the same as the honors. It cannot. It does not take you to any registration, but it's it's an addition to the masters. They go hand in hand. Okay. So after after doing my 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 uh, masters with this road of of diplomas, will mm -hmm. I be registered as a technologist or will I be registered as an engineer? Like, uh, and what is the weight be, between the two? Like, one which one is? Yeah, uh, let me assist you after the postgraduate diploma and then you, you qualify, you, 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 you enter into the master's engineering, master's program that is E-22 PE at EXA, accredited by EXA. Then you are eligible to register as a candidate engineer. Professionally, something that it, it, it goes hand in hand with experience from industry. I cannot talk about okay. it, but I can talk about okay. the candidate part that on academic route, you will have met the requirements. Yes. Yeah. So now, like uh, I can, I can literally register as a as a, as a candidate technology, uh, yes. not a technologist, as a as a candidate because I'm busy, I'm busy with my advanced diploma, yes, but I have a national diploma. Once I'm yeah. done, I can register as a yes. technologist. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank Pleasure. you very much. Thank you. May lower your hand. And we've got Muslanga guest. Um, oh, thank you, sir. I was a bit late on the on the presentation, but however, um, I just wanted to ask um, for an example. I'm working on a consultant firm, and then I filled those forms. I should have submitted them uh, last month. So I wanted to ask if um, they expire. I need to resign the other ones because I think they have exceeded 30 days. So I need to go and fill them again. And the second question is, um, I'm, 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 I'm currently doing a BSc honors in construction management. I, I have a BNG tech in civil engineering. So I just wanted to ask, um, also for me to register as a peer range or peer range tech, uh, having your honors of um, construction management, is it going to disadvantage me or what? 
because I'm thinking of branching back into uh, civil, the masters after 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 completing these honors. Okay, let's start with the first one. I do not work for EXA, so I will not know about their process of forms expiring. You need to conduct EXA directly. Okay. The second one in terms of the construction management, uh, there's a council that deals with SACCP and SACP CMP, South yeah. African Council for Project Management and Construction Management Profession. So it will be them that, that goes there. But there's nothing that stops you to submit a combination of qualifications to EXA, as we said, by SPAE 17 PRO document, let them do the assessment. So there are two ways. Either you use that at the, at the construction management at a, a, a council, same as EXA, but for construction management, or you submit that as a combination of qualifications that let EXA decide. Oh, OK. Hi, that was very informative. Thanks a lot. Pleasure. OK, okay. Uh, just one last more. Um, uh, on the masters, um, it's it's which one here at UG? Is it the MNG, the coursework, or the yeah? Ex yeah, that's good a question, but you need to ask UJ. That's what I'm saying. No, don't ask EXA. Ask the people that are presenting it. That is your masters, the one aligned to EXA or the one aligned to the E-22 PE. They will be the one who can tell better. Oh, okay. No, thanks yeah. a lot. Okay. Uh, is it Alusha Vivi, Eric? Uh, thanks. Uh, I just want a quick one, man. I don't want to take long. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear, sir. Okay. Uh, I've got more than uh, 10 to 15 years experience in uh, road construction. Mm. But basically, I work on the consultant. I work on the construction now. My experience more is under municipality. When I check those forms, for EXA for registration. They want something which is a design. And where I work, I never done any design. Remember municipality, we rely on the consultant or the outsider. So I don't know whether I can be granted my PR or what is the way forward, because I never done any anything related to design or whatever when I'm in the municipality. I did design long time ago, but now where I'm working most is maintenance issue. I'm currently working at a Johannesburg Road Agency dealing with the road maintenance. So there's nothing to deal with the uh, design. I normally rely on the outside. I we call the consultant to come and design for us. I don't know whether will I be qualified or I must just submit and then EXA will tell me. Thanks. Okay, thank you, sir. Very simple answer. If you check the outcome two says design or develop solutions. So a person who's in the client body receives the, the drawings or designs from the consultant is using engineering knowledge to make judgment on those designs that are submitted. So that's why it comes or development of solutions. So you'll develop a solution, guide the consultant if you accept the drawing or not, and then you accept it using your engineering knowledge so you are catered for it's not only design as i said design or development of solutions in engineering okay thanks pleasure yeah apply please the, that 15 10 years experience must not go to waste eh? yeah i'm, I'm going to send i've already done all my report it's just a metal subject please please Eric. Yes. okay then yes. thank you so much yes. okay is it a uh, bula christine I'm not seeing the full name. Ebula, Christine, you may unmute and ask your question. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask, I think someone just asked the question previously, but I didn't really understand the answer. So I studied national diploma activity since they phased out the degree and did my mm -hmm. advanced degree. But now I also applied for my master's at UJ, which I'm doing currently. But now I was wondering uh, about the registration at EXA because I'm registered as a candidate technician with my national diploma. So I was wondering if I finish, when I finish my You know, you're, you're breaking up. You go up and down in your voice. Can you maybe start afresh? I'm saying um, I'm, I finished my national diploma activity. Mm. And then when they phase out the, the BTEC, 
I went to UNISA and did my advanced diploma. And mm. then right now I'm registered with UJ doing my M inch, my M inch, um, in in structural engineering. Mm. So what I wanted to ask, because I, I heard someone was asking about it, but I didn't really understand your, your answer according to that. It's about uh, what's your registration after I finished the M inch program at UJ because I didn't see anything on the on the UJ program. I went to the X. I didn't really understand what was there, so I don't know if you can uh, try to explain how um, actually what what um, what level you're gonna give me. Am I gonna be eligible to apply for candidate engineer or am I just gonna stay in my technician uh, okay. title? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It depends on on. Oh. You, you need to ask UJ if that M inch that they are offering, is it the one that is accredited by EXA? Then if it is the one, then you'll, you'll be legible to register as a candidate engineer. The, remember, EXA sets a framework. Universities put the program qualification mix that they can offer the qualifications. Oh, OK. So I have to check the UJ. OK. Yeah, check with UJ. That is your master's accredited by EXA. Is it the one that is the, the with SPE-22-PE? All right, I'll do that. Thank you very much. Pleasure. OK, then we've got Ntwaki Totteti. OK, hello, Mr. Jones. Uh, hello. I just, just want to understand something. I'm not sure if I heard you correctly. You were saying that uh, after registering for EXA, one must have a mentor at work. So I just want to know, um, what are the requirements of becoming a mentor or do I just take anyone or it should be someone who has registered with EXA as well? Thank you. Pleasure. Yeah, I, we were saying the mentor part comes in when you are under training, either under candidacy that is formal or informal. Everybody in life has got a mentor somewhere, somehow. But the one that is going to be a formal mentor has to be a mentor that is registered with EXA because then they understand what the requirements are of registration so that they can guide you properly. The idea is that you get guided properly in that realm. That's where the mentor is coming from. But if you want to register now and then you've got the more than past three years experience, you're not a candidate, you don't need a mentor that is official. That mentor will be guiding you on a site and it's not going to appear anywhere in your document, but your referees will be those that appear there. So the mentor is in the candidacy phase whereby you need somebody to guide you to, through the process. Because if you go through a structured program, it lessens the time. Okay. Uh, is it Siedat Nadira? Um, good morning, sir. Thank you so much for reviewing your committed session. Thank you. Um, I would just like to ask, um, I think it had been two or three years ago when I still was working at Unisa, we had an extra road show. And they had mentioned that they were going to provide a special track or route um, for lecturers or academics to apply for professional engineering. So I'm not sure, has there been any advancements? I'm betting, are, are you far from your mic, ma'am? I'm betting to hear you. Can you get closer to the mic? Um, can you hear me now, sir? Much better. OK, great. So about two or three years ago, when I still worked at Unisa, um, they had an extra road show. And it was mentioned to us that there would be a special track or route for academics to register as professional engineers. So I just wanted to find out if that track is still going to happen or should we just apply as everybody else applies? OK, yeah, I think let's start it there. There's already a confusion from what you said. You said lecturers register as engin professional engineers. It doesn't work well, ne? so lecturers must register as, as lecturers. It, it's fair that way, isn't it? <laughs> I would think so, but maybe <laughs> that won't happen. I'm not okay. sure. <laughs> yeah, let me repeat. I answered this earlier. The teachers on day one, they go to the teacher's college, then they get their teacher's qualification, they, get, they go to university, they get their B.Ed, Bachelor of Education. Then they register with the council for uh, the... It's, it's a SASI, South African Council for Educators. Then they are sorted. Lecturers must go to the lecturer's council with their lecturer's qualification, register as lecturers with the lecturer council. Problem solved. And technical people, engineers, technologists, technicians, then must go to register with EXA as technical people because that's where they, are, they reside. But the one that we just spoke about, lecturer council, does not exist. You, you are a technical person before you become a lecturer. The lecturer is the work that you are doing. 
because there's no qualification for lecturers. You, you by virtue of working, you work there. So you, you are going to register as a, as a as a technical person, either as a professional engineer, professional engineering technologist, or as a professional engineering technician, or professional certificate engineer, or a specified category in a specified categories. So test the system. You need to meet the eleven outcomes. They are not specifying that where are you working and so on. So apply, but Excel will never have a specified or a special or a something that is on a site for the academics. And I'll tell you why. A friend of mine who was unable to get work, and it's a taxi driver, has got a Bachelor of Engineering in Chemical Engineering, will also be catered for the taxi drivers who've got that. You see how are we now diluting the, the, the profession? So you, 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 first, before you became a taxi driver, he is a, 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 a chemical engineer. Then he must register as a chemical engineer, not that he must be felt sympathy for because he's a taxi driver. So, for example, not that you must be felt sympathy for because you're a, you're a lecturer or you're in academia. First qualification that you have is a technical qualification, and we stick to that. You get registered as a technical person. The lecturing is the work that you do. It's not necessarily that you are defined as a as a as a, as a lecturer because I'll ask you, show me the qualification that made you become a lecturer. They don't exist. Is it clear? It definitely makes sense as to what you're saying. I think where the confusion came in. I'm begging to hear you, ma'am. You, you sound like you are far from your mic. Sorry, no, my mic is right here. I'm not sure what. Oh, you are better now. You are better now. Okay. So I think the confusion came in because uh, again, one of my colleagues mentioned this to me about two days ago, and he said that um, they, they attended an extra presentation, and it was said that there was going to be a chat for lecturers. That's mm -mm. why I, I was asking. Yeah. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. There's nothing like you see. There's no. There's no. No. No one gets special attention inside the registration at EXA. We have okay. signed up with the International Engineer Alliance. It's a, it's a signatory for the technical people. First, you are a you are an engineer, technician, or technologist. The lecturing is the work that you do. You are not a lecturer when you come to EXA. You are a lecturer at where you are working at the university. So when you okay. get registered, then you are a technical person. So that's what I'm saying. To make life easy, lecturers must go to lecturers council and register with yeah. lecturers council. But it does not exist because you don't have, you have lecturers qualification. You all have technical qualification. It's the work that you do. Okay, no, Jason, I think this makes sense. I think make, yes, yes. Yeah, I think we'll just pursue um, uh, just uh, compiling our our application. Thank you. So Please, much. yeah, apply and test it with X, and then let's take it from there. If you don't apply, Thank we will you. never know. Uh, as to where your shortcomings are or deficiencies are. Thank you so much. We'll do so. Thanks. Pleasure. Okay, then. May lower your hand. I think, um, Fanafut, you came back again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. I came back again. I wanted to know about the the experience part whereby uh, is in service training also part of experience? No. That No. No. That's, no. that's a no-no. No. Okay. No, it's a part of your, um, your education. Without that, you will not get your qualification. So it's not counted. Yes. No. Oh, okay. Okay. And also, I wanted to ask if maybe, let's say you're now working and you register with XI. Uh, XI, is it possible for, for it to actually uh, assist you if you are underpaid in your company? or? No, no, no. XI regulates the profession, not the individuals, the profession. The arrangement that you have is not an engineering part of your underpaid. And that, that is not, that's got nothing to do with EXA. EXA set the guideline fees for the clients to pay the consultants. But when it comes to that relationship, it's a human resource issue. All right, thank you. Pleasure. Is it uh, Ade, Ade, Ade Wumi? Sorry if I pronounced it in, wrongly. You may unmute and speak. Hello, how are you? Can you hear me? No, it was Hello? a day before before long. Eh? Oh, 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 yes, I'm here. Yeah. Um, good afternoon. Good, um, is it still morning? Yeah, good morning. Two minutes to the day, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so please, um, I came uh, a bit late because I was in another meeting, so I might have lost some points. So I, I want to ask, um, I've been registered as a candidate engineer since uh, 2014 or 2015, thereabout. Uh, and ever since then, I've remained as a candidate because um, 
the the industry that I'm working in is a telecommunications industry, and um, there is no professional engineer in my department or on the project that I'm that I'm currently doing. So uh, I've been working as a quality person ever since I joined the company. So it's difficult for me to get a mentor to sign my experiences and stuffs like to stand as a guarantor for me and that's why i've not been able to register as a professional engineer since then so in this kind of scenario what can i do and i've been trying to to message people on linkedin i've been trying to meet people individually like to you know get connections i don't know if i can get mentorship or something that can at least you know assist me to get into the professional care that, that, I, that I'm, I know I'm due for. Yeah. And okay. the second question, if I can just go through my questions at once. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my second question is, if I don't work as a civil engineer, because my first degree is in civil engineering from Nigeria, and my second degree is engineering management with University of Johannesburg. So if I don't work as a civil engineer, and I work in a telecoms company, Am I still allowed to apply as a professional engineering technologist? Registration is, is seamless. It's very easy with EXA. Is that uh, you can register when you meet the 11 uh, requirements, but it must be. Remember, your certificate will say professional engineer, not professional engineer telecoms or slash civil. It just broad. You need to have a broad base. But if you don't test the system, they will never know where you are fitting. So uh, I'll advise that rather apply with EXA. And the one yeah. for your, yeah, the one for the referees, I mean, the mentor, you don't need a mentor, you need a referee. The mentor is something that I just answered the previous uh, 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 person who was asking a question. Is when you're under the official or when you are in a candidate, or even you can have it, even if you are not, but it's not somebody who's going to appear on any form. But the referee and your supervisors are those people. But the onus are upon you to structure it as such that you have those people. So if you don't have them, and I hate that you said you are doing quality, if you're not doing engineering work, it's going to be a challenge for you to get registered because you must meet those 11 outcomes that are requesting engineering related work. Yes, that's that's what I'm saying. Um, because, um, okay, how do I put it now? My job I to, at the moment is saying site engineer, right? But on the site engineer uh, aspect of it, I do the the implementation and um, yeah, no, I, yeah. I think maybe let's not go into the detail. That's what I'm saying. Take the application form, check if what you are doing. You can do a test yourself and check what you are doing. If it meets the requirements, you can make that deduction there. Yes, but the problem yeah. is, but the problem I I still need someone to sign for me. Yes, which I don't have. Yeah, that's where the challenge is. I'm saying that EXA cannot help you with that because you are the one, the fate of your, 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 your future, where you are working in industry. EXA, EXA is the regulator of the profession. They will assess. They cannot give you somebody and again uh, evaluate that person. They cannot be the referee and the player at the same time. EXA is the regulator of the profession. Okay, but isn't there a kind of a pool no. where... It's no. easy to, to, no, to contact no. people, you know. Yeah, it might be under your voluntary association, but not inside EXA. EXA is the regulator. The regulator will not have that. Because the moment they do that, they are double dipping. Yeah, okay. you see what you see what uh, many of us are going through yeah. to, to get registered, yeah. Yeah, but EXA is, is a regulator, unfortunately. It's not a voluntary association. They will never have that pool. Even now, I can tell you, the only engineer that is in, was inside EXA was the CEO. All of the people administrators, we do the work from outside EXA. They can never employ an engineer, a technical person, because they don't need engineering work inside EXA. They are doing administration work. So they'll never even have that pool. The pool they have is for the people that are doing work for them as assessors, reviewers, and moderators. They are a regulator. OK. I uh, saw so Ms. Maputa had the hand up. My time uh, is coming to an end at 12. I can accommodate the last three questions then. Tiromo Forbes, make it short. Yes, ma'am. Do you not have to go? <laughs> That's what I'm saying, at 12 o'clock, 
Yeah, but uh, let me let's accommodate the ones that are here already. Okay. The yeah, we'll end the with... ones in the chat. Yes, yeah. I'm we'll just end going with... to ask the remaining ones to be brief and avoid dialogue. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Pleasure. Tiromo Forbes. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. Right. I have got a question on. Uh, I I started already the process of registration. And I submitted, I know like Excel would require you to send your qualifications, right? It was done and I was given a green light now to say, now submit the what, uh, the application after evaluation of the qualifications. But because of other constraints, I did not proceed with that one. It failed, right? So what I wanted to find out, okay, let's say if I want to restart the process, do I need to resubmit the qualifications again or the evaluation that was done is enough. That is uh, maybe question number one. It's a short one. The second one is a short one as well. I know like you were talking of the competences that one has to have. And uh, let's say if you look at some of the competences that some people, let's say even among us, let's say in the, 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 the audience, in the audience right now, you build them during the time when you are doing your studies. Say if you're in the academic field, let's say you're doing a PhD, some of those competencies you can be built, let's say, during your PhD project. Uh, is it acceptable or is it not acceptable, that one? So those are the two questions. Thank you, sir. Okay. The first one, unfortunately, I do not work for X. I will not know about the internal processes, so you need to conduct them directly. The second one, uh, for my mandate, was about the professional registration. So the processes of administration, I would not know. Second one, uh, you need to test the system. If you don't apply with X, I will not know that those competencies are meeting the requirements or not. Okay, you may lower your hand. Second one, thank uh, thank uh, pleasure, Muloko Sebake. Muloko is gone. Tariro, please come Hi, hi, Mr. Muloi. Yes. Uh, sorry, Mr. Muloi-san, sorry. Yes. Sorry. I just wanted to ask, with experience alone, uh, without qualification, is there a clear cut way to move from P PR Tech Edge to PR Edge? Is there? There's no alternative route. That's why the master's has been brought into. The alternative route was only in the technology qualification, I mean, part, which is the technician and the technologies, but to engineer you need a academic qualification or a base that you can prove. So that experience of yours, you need to submit to EXA that it gets evaluated under E17 PRO document and E18, E18 PRO, then they can come back to you. Oh, okay. So it yeah. means that there's a breach there. It's yeah, serious. but you need to submit for educational evaluation. There's a okay. form that is on the website, but they ask it about the credits of the qualification. They don't have the one that is for experience only. Uh, okay, but but uh, with BH or BS, you can register as a technologist if you want. With that? With BH and BSC, you can register as a technologist if you want to. Yes, yes, yes. But you can't do the other way around. It's very strange. No, but still, even on that one, they, they will have to evaluate your qualification. Okay. Yeah, remember, as I said, everything is possible, but it needs to be evaluated. Okay, no, thanks a lot. Pleasure. Okay, last but not least, there is a Tariro guest. Oh, you said you were going to call me that time now. <laughs> Tariro guest, please. Um, Hello, Mr. Jones. Yeah, Maluka like Sibake, to... Sorry, Maluka Sibake, drop your hand, please. Okay, I wanted to ask um, if you have three years experience post uh, graduation, but then the referees are not uh, registered with EXA, rather they are registered with ZIE as Zimbabwean Institution Board. Uh, would that be eligible for me to apply as a professional, uh, as a professional uh, EXA, rather, or maybe I should start again to apply as a candidate first, as a candidate engineer, or I should apply as a professional engineer? Yeah, it's more uh, an inside administration question, but the form says it must be EXA registered. So if there's a waiver through that, you'll have to find it inside EXA at the registration business unit. You need to contact EXA on that one. Okay, thank you so much. Pleasure. Okay, Ms. Maputa, back to you. We are done. Ms. Precious Maputa. 
Yes, thank you so much, um, Dade Muloisani. Are we going to look at the ones in the chat box or are we calling it a day? No, it's fine. Uh, how many are they? We can assist me with them. I see they start from where? As they start from Emmanuel Iman. I don't know if they're still in the meeting. It says, please, what is the fate for international candidates with international qualification and membership? Can we also join EXA? If yes, what's the process? Yes, yes, they need to, the, the process they find on the EXA website. Okay, thank you. And yeah. I think this one you've already answered. Can a candidate engineering technologist apply to professional engineer? I heard you uh, addressing this candidate yes. engineer to I'm at length. Then some are, some of them are very grateful for the session and okay. they're requesting the presentation. The dominant the dominant uh, dominant comments they are in uh, gratitude comments. The Jackson Mashaba says, can professionals who are studying and working under the quality department also register with EXA? I think by quality it's quality and operations management. Yeah, it's not an engineering. It's, it's not an engineering. OK, thank you. And uh, the other one from Thanga says, sir, if you have a BH tech in civil engineering and then started a BSc honors in construction, I think he, you are just one, yeah. his hand. Yeah. Uh, Masombuka Bongani says, I'm a registered, I am registered as a professional engineering technologist with EXA, civil engineering. And I am happy to assist those who want to register with EXA. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's offering thank services. You, uh, thank you, everybody saying thank you, thank you, thank you. And that's it. Okay. Thank you so much oh, to all the students. It took many hours. My question. My question is in the chat. All right, you can please raise it. I missed it. Please raise it since your mic is on. Okay. So my, sorry, please. So my question was that um, if you if you register